to our the new president of Toastmasters, Chris Jordan. Oh, oh that's good. Did you catch that? Did you catch what she just said? How did she introduce me? As the president. As the president of Toastmasters. Funny story. I had no idea I was the president of Toastmasters at that moment. See, back then, we're talking what, about a year, yep. a year and change at this point. Victoria and I were sitting in the hospital upstairs, having a conversation about where the club was going because we were hurting. As you heard briefly, we had very few attendees, very few paid members, and unbeknownst to me, we were in a, in a world of hurt. <laughs> So we were talking because I come on board and I'm a leadership guy and we're trying to figure out how do we develop, how can we grow this club from nothing? And we weren't really sure. But apparently Victoria was. And in a breath of a moment, without any validation from anybody else but Victoria, I became the president of this club. How many here would say, I'm done? <laughs> I, I mean, let, I seriously thought about it. I'm not going to lie. Who am I to say some kid from South Chicago who's lived a jacked up life forever, making all the wrong decisions in his life, stumbling, falling, always getting it wrong? Who am I to be called president of anything except maybe failure? But in that moment, I had a choice. In every moment of our lives, we have a choice. We've all fallen down, yes? Can we count on our hands and toes how many times we've fallen down? We probably need about 20,000 bodies to do that, correct? <laughs> I'm no exception. But I knew that moment was important. See, there was about 20 years before I joined the Air Force. And I was just a lowly little two-striper, you know, no big, ideas or thoughts that I'd be anything important. I'm just trying to do my job, just slide by. Under the radar, right? You know, you're in the military, you don't volunteer for anything. You slide by, you do your job, and you're, you're okay. But no, I got it in my mind 20 years ago that I was going to partner with another young airman, and we were gonna fix something that was broken. See, we were in charge of priority weapons. Some of you guys might know them as nuclear weapons. Our unit that was supposed to be securing these, so don't freak out when I tell you this, we're secure. Maybe not then, but we are now. <laughs> Our pass rate was about 33% in being able to be signed off to secure these weapons. How many of you feel safe? 33%? So I knew right away, this isn't good, because this is our jobs, this is America. John was talking about, you know, these are our lives. So myself and another airman came up with an idea. We said, we're gonna create a training program. We're gonna fix this problem. We're gonna make this work, and we did. As two low-level airmen, we created a training program in three months that turned everything around to 95%. We had captains, leaders in the, in the organization coming to us, running, people from other units through our training program and fix it. I knew right then and there 20 years ago that I had something special, even if I didn't want to acknowledge it. So fast forward to Toastmasters president that I didn't ask for. I think I really did a long time ago when I decided and made a choice to take on that training program and make a difference. So the first call I get as president, Toastmasters. You're like, oh, <laughs> president. Chris? Yeah, yeah, how you doing? Yeah, you guys are suspended. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> that means that Toastmasters suspended our club because we only had two paid members at that time. You're supposed to have at least eight. So Toastmaster said, you have like, you know, three months ago to fix this or you're <laughs> gonna be off the face of the earth. So that's my welcome to Toastmasters as a leader party, if you will. 
So what would you do? What would you do? Recruit. Hmm? Recruit. Recruit. Okay. So I, I did. I, I decided I had to make a choice. I could run and be like, you know what, Victoria, sorry, you're on your own. Or I could fix this. Right? So we decided to fix it. We gathered the few people we had together. We came up with a plan. And I went back 20 years ago to where I built a team around an idea to fix a problem. And it worked. I said, well, if it worked once, <laughs> it's got to work again. And I can tell you, Don, Rob, Victoria, Joe, who's not here, Christine, people who finally just said, you know what? This is worth it. Ten years ago, this club was started. This year is our 10-year anniversary. And I know there's other clubs that are celebrating 60, but I think considering what this club has been through to be able to stand up here and say that we're celebrating our 10th year as a distinguished club coming from being suspended with only two members, I would call that a pretty heavy comeback. See, we've all been through things in our life. We might be going through them right now. We might be struggling with something emotionally, physically, spiritually. It doesn't matter. What matters is the choice that you have to find sometime, anytime in your life that you succeeded. And then to mirror that in the here and now and see it come to fruition again. Ten years ago, we are here at Distinguished Club. From 2 to 20, we've come back. Thank you, guys. Fabulous, 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 baby. From 2 to 20.